G'day, I'm Warwick Schiller here for Weaver Leather and as you can see over here by those little legs underneath it's folding season so I'm about to do a series of videos on what we do with our folds here and you know I've been doing something for the last few years that's a little bit odd a lot of people have asked about it so we're going to do a video and and show you how we go about it and probably the big thing is what we do with these folds is we're hands off so normally I think when people have folds you know have folds they, they do one of two things their hands on where they you know they get the fold and try to imprint them and touch them and be over them as much as possible and then people who are hands off where they put them out in the pasture and you know the folds don't actually see a human till they're you know two or three something like that so with what we're doing it's not a hands-off approach we've done it for a few years now what it is is the first thing we want to do is just make it about consent so the fold we hang out out here if the foal wants to approach us the foal can approach us if they want to come up and sniff us they will they can we don't actually try to touch them uh, this one here is about 10 days old now and and he's come up and sniffed us maybe once i think he sniffed me once my wife once but he's pretty feely and pretty skittish and the reason for doing this is what it does it builds connection first you get those foals where they're quite comfortable around you before you try to do anything to them and the reason I really don't touch them to it well I, I do touch them early one of the things you've got to do with a foal when they're first born is possibly draw blood on them give them a shot and treat their umbilical cord and so you've got to get a hold of them then but you know there's a book called waking the tiger that I'm not really going to go into here but it's about how trauma is trapped in the body and it's a lot about how um, things can happen at a young age. And so for me personally, I have always had a level of shutdown um, and never knew where it came from. And it turned out that when I was three months old, I had pneumonia and I spent a week in hospital with, um, you know, in a crib without, without my parents, you know what I mean? And apparently at that stage, you don't you know you're three months old you don't have access to fight or flight and but the only only thing you have access to freeze so i kind of developed a freeze response early on that i'm still working on today and what tends to happen if you overhandle these folds from a young age they tend to have a little bit of freeze response in them so they, they might seem like they're quiet but they're not a fully functioning mentally well-developed horse and so what I have done the last couple of years, well, the, the, this is the third fold we've done it with now, is, you know, you've got to get a hold of them to, you know, do shots and treat their umbilical cord and stuff like that. And in the past, what I would do, I'd hold them if they struggled, I would hold them till they stop struggling, okay? And get whatever it is done and then let them go. But what I've done with the last two or three folds now is hold them and they struggle and then you've got to do what you've got to do and then I'll wait for them to try to get free again and when they do try to get free i will actually let them go so i'm not going to hold them for five minutes while they're struggling and then let go as soon as they try to get free i will let them go and that, apparently that's the completion of the trauma cycle and so that's the that's the first bit and then we basically stay hands off on with them for you know quite a long time uh, the one we had last year rupert he was very very standoffish and this one this little one here is pretty much the same he's kind of feely flighty um, you make a noise he runs around sort of thing and we spent probably six weeks just sitting out here Rupert Rupert didn't want to come really and engage with us at all didn't want to come up and say hi so one day actually the same mare here I sat down with her grain and I sat it in my lap figuring if she eats the grain out of my lap he might want to hang around and that day he actually stuck his head in the bucket and started eating some of the grain and so I was like oh that's good but the next day he now he, he went from being too concerned to not concerned enough and wanted to come you know running up to me and bucking and kicking as he went past and kind of you know then he might come up and run up and rear up at me and so then it was time to do some work on that because you really you know you think about a draw drive ratio if you had a hundred percent drive when you showed up they'd run away if you had 100% draw when you showed up, they'd run towards you and possibly into you. And I think with a foal, it's very easy to switch back and forth between the two. So at this point in time, I'm not terribly concerned if, if we 
you know, can't do anything. So let's, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to stay away from any trauma in his body. So, but let's say he did get sick and we had to do some things to him. Well, it's like when I had pneumonia as a kid, I had to go to the hospital, but you don't just take a three month old child and stick him in a crib and barely attend to him for a week if you don't have to. But if you have to, you know, it's, it's that or die sort of thing. So what I'm trying to do is stay away from, um, you know, having any sort of that trauma stuck in there. But Rupert last year, what I would do with him is if, after he got a bit too rambunctious, what I, would, what I didn't want to do was make any corrections. So a correction would be physical, get off me, doing something to them. And so what I would do with him is if he would approach me and approach me a bit too quickly, like he just comes marching in like that, I would just do something like that, not direct any energy at him, but maybe slap my leg, something like that. And he might run off or whatever, but what you find is the next time he approaches, instead of marching up, he would walk up and he'd slow down and stop and look and say, can I come up and say hi? And so you just got to be aware of that part. But he was about, oh, six weeks old or so, I think. And the first time I ever laid a hand on him, we actually, I led the mayor and, and led the mayor down to the round pen and he came down there with me. And this little bit of video here is the first time I ever laid a hand on him and you can see you'll see from this how easy it is with a horse that was very quite skittish in the beginning how easy it is when you have that connection we just got to the point so if you think about it El, uh, Rupert was initially very standoffish and then when he got a bit more confident he game he became cocky I'll just show you what I mean that right there we've never touched on this foal before it's just now is the time he's ready. He's not worried about me, but he's not pushing into me. Like, it's like he's been touched all over. I rub my hand down his leg. No one's ever run their hand down his leg before. So if you can, you can do the right things up to this point in time, it'll be pretty easy. So I'm not really gonna do anything with Rupert yet, because if you've watched the Chance series, the problem we had with some of the time, <laughs> Hi, and look at this, he's not, like, he's been a bit of a chomper recently, and there's no chomping there. I'm just going to do this. I've never done that, okay? I'm going to do that. I've never done that. Here, Bella. Stay there a second. I've never done this. I've never done this. I've never been in both eyes before. This is all first. This is all this. See, this is, this is how, if you can get the, this is connection before concepts. Okay, we've got the connection, and I'm going to push my luck here and see if I can run my hand down his front leg like this. I'm going to run my hand down his hind leg like... <laughs> now it's getting ridiculous. Um, yes. Uh, okay, what else can I do? I mean, I've touched the whole body. All the way down. I'm going to go down this leg here. <laughs> okay, I've touched everything. That's all the parts, the back, the tummy, the flank, the gaskin. I'm, I'm done. See <laughs> you guys. Um. Hey, Roops. So what am I going to do here? I might see how Rupert is on this side. Okay, so I can touch his neck. Never done that before. Touch his back. Never done that before. Touch his hip. Never done that before. Touch his front leg, never done that before. Touch his hind leg, never done that before. Oh my God, this is just ridiculous. So you can see the first time I touched him, it was really, really quite easy. And you know, like the first time I went to do anything with his feet, uh, it was probably about two months in you know, he's probably about two months, two and a half months old. And the first day I went to actually pick his feet up, I could pick his foot up and he actually had a, a piece of stuff stuck in his frog, like a, a piece of his frog was falling off and I just got to pick it up and peel it off and when I let go and I sat his foot and he just sat his toe on the ground and when you're trying to teach a horse to have their feet handled, one thing that tells you that they're really relaxed when you put their foot down is they don't feel the need to stick it back flat on the ground, they can put their toe on the ground and so all that comes from connection too. Um, the same day, he, while I was messing with him, he lay down and had a bit of a sleep. So I thought, well, I'm going to sit down and see if I can scooch up next to him a little bit. And uh, he actually let me scoot right up, right up next to him. And then uh, I was sitting there kind of talking to the camera about stuff. And he actually 
flopped over and laid his head in my lap. And you know, this is a this is a horse who was really quite feely and goofy and stuff at the start. And I kind of have a feeling that he might have been um, could have been a horse that, was, that gets resentful quite easy if you train on them too much too soon. But right now he's he's a piece of cake. He's the yearling now, and, he, and he's very very easy. So you know. This is why I'm doing this whole hands-off approach. They get really comfortable with you without you wearing any of the natural horsiness of them out of them. And so it's, it's really big if you can get that connection first. You know, the older brother who is, is three, Chance, we did the same thing with him. And uh, one day he was out there in the arena laying down and I went over and sat down next to him and while I was sitting next to him he kind of laid completely flat and then I kind of put my head back and rested my head on his neck and I must have dozed off and I was out there for a while and when I he sat up which is what woke me up and when I came back in the house took my wife and son my sister said oh I went out there and took some pictures of you so that's what this picture is here is of, of chance out there and so all that stuff is from connection and I've never found horses to be so brave and curious about things you know chance the first time i went to load him on a horse trailer um well not load him on a horse trailer i was going to introduce him to the horse trailer i was holding on to him i turned to the talk of the camera and while i did he climbed into the camera uh, rupert one of the first times i was out in the arena working on leading with him he we've got some obstacles out there he led me over a sheet of plywood and so they just really having this hands-off approach at the start they really maintain that sense of curiosity that that horses have you know horses once they get over fear they become curious and i really think this is the way to go and like i said with this little guy over here we are just gonna we've actually been sitting outside the pen we've got some chairs we've been sitting outside the pen and watching them just this mare we rub on her a lot we give her a, and you can see it rained last night she's rolled so she needs a good glove but we have these hands on gloves and we will give her a good rubbing and he's always around the other side of us so you know we've just he's always hiding basically from us and so it's telling me he's not ready for us to come in here too much yet um, you know the thing I don't want to do is approach him and have him want to wheel and move away from me I always want to try to I want to try to get that draw first but I'm not going to you know I'm not going to do anything to encourage the draw just being part of the furniture being in here being around and not really focusing too much on them I think is the way to go so this is that's kind of an introduction to how we go about things uh, with these horses and with these folds and in the next few videos I'm going to kind of show you the process after you go through all this connection stuff to where they're totally comfortable with you you know you've seen a bit right there like the first time I touched Rupert it was simply easy the first time I went to pick his feet up it was easy you saw a chance the first time I went to take him anywhere near the horse trail it was easy and so I think that the, the training is so much easier if you can get this connection first. So that's, that's the, the, the basics of it. Why I do things, why I don't put hands on them, why I let them go when they struggle. And you would think that make, letting them go when they struggle would make them be uh, a struggling sort of a horse, but you know, Chance and both Chance and Rupert have none of that in them. But I think it just, it keeps the horse in the horse. And I think someone's sneaking up on me over here. Um, but that's, that's the beginning and the next in the next uh, episode I will start to break down the steps from here on out